it didn't seem to me that Bloomington was putting any effort into finding my son, nor Peru. And that only people that was looking for my son was me, my children, my friends, people I didn't know. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to plan a search party. I didn't know where to look at. I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't know how to do anything. Jelani Day was a 25-year-old Danfield native who at a young age had already accomplished so much. He ran track at Alabama A&M, however currently was attending Illinois State University. He was on the road to receiving a master's degree in speech pathology. However, Tuesday, August 24th of 2021, those dreams would be cut short by his disappearance. Following his disappearance, a vigorous search would occur by his family. However, it would end up in a tragedy. Jelani's last known whereabouts would be at a cannabis dispensary on August 24th of 2021. By the 25th, he would be reported missing by his family. On August 26th, Jelani Day's 2010 Chrysler 300 would be found in a wooded area of Peru. That's about 60 miles north of Bloomington, where he originally disappeared. Roughly one week after his disappearance on August the 31st, Bloomington Police Department would release information on the disappearance of Jelani and ask the public if anyone knows about his whereabouts. By Saturday, September the 4th of 2021, authorities would find a body just off the south bank of the Illinois River. Due to the county's lack of resources, they would announce that it would take weeks for the body to be identified. By Thursday of September 23rd of 2021, the body would be positively identified as Jelani Day. But here's where it goes left. The authorities are looking at this currently as a suicide when there is undoubtedly too much evidence to go against that theory and we don't even have paperwork yet. Common sense can tell you all you need to know. From the analysis of what we do have, everything points to this being foul play. Nothing points to this being a suicide. Let's explore the possibilities. When the authorities found the car of Jelani Day, it would be in a wooded area of Peru now, Peru is a predominantly white area. The authorities have came to the theory that Jelani Day was walking around, but he wasn't seen by anyone. They came to this conclusion because some of his items were found in different areas. Jelani's wallet would be found roughly a few blocks away from his car, but there was also an entirely different item there from a separate student. It was a lanyard. If you're unfamiliar with what a lanyard is, they're mainly made out of polyester. It's basically a keychain worn around the neck. People attach their student identification to it. Some people attach their keys to it, etc. Now, he was last seen wearing a Jimi Hendrix t-shirt, shorts, and a blue baseball cap. But a couple of days later, when they found that car, they found his clothes inside of the car. The strongest theory going around that I actually support would actually be the robbery theory because that's what makes the most sense right now. You have to put all of the details together. He went to a cannabis shop. Then his car ended up an hour away. The clothes that he was last seen wearing was found inside of the car. When I heard the details about this, that is the first theory that I formed. He went to a cannabis dispensary. Then he disappears. His car is found an hour away, and I had to put all of that together and come to a conclusion. Now, what I'm about to say next, a lot of people probably won't agree with what I'm about to say, but I, I just have to be honest because people are human, and we as humans make the same mistakes. Jelani Day did have a meeting that morning. He was seen earlier seemingly dressed like he was going to a meeting. So I had to put myself in a man's shoes and think, what would make someone skip a meeting that he's dressed for? He didn't skip it to smoke weed. That's obviously. I believe Jelani Day maybe received a call from a girl that stayed in Peru. 
If this happened, I'm guessing that the girl maybe baited him in to come and seeing her in Peru. He stopped, got a little weed so he could smoke with her. She probably one of those girls that stays with her parents so she can't do it around the house. So they decide to just drive to a little secluded area and spark up. Now them finding his clothes inside of the car is what led me to this theory. Cause I'm guessing that this occurred during sexual intercourse. Which would explain the clothes he was last seen in being found in the car itself. Now I formed this theory solely off the theory that I'm guessing his body was found with no clothes at all. Then the first thought that came to my head is Maybe Jelani got away, maybe grabbed a few of his items, ran through the woods, and then that's how his wallet dropped. But then I had to stop and think to myself, if I'm guessing foul play, if Jelani took off running, he ran track. He would have outran them easily. So whatever happened to him occurred right there at that car. I'm guessing at this point at the car, he was probably kidnapped. I came to this conclusion by exploring all the possibilities of how the scenario of a robbery could have played out. They could have showed up, demanded cash. Now these days, people just don't carry a lot of cash on. So if people are showing up to rob you and they want cash, if you don't have any, it doesn't end there. They don't just walk away. The next step is kidnap you and hold you in place. That way they can get the pin numbers to your debit cards, etc. However, some people are just so strong-willed that they won't even bow down to a robbery. I mean, we know that no one tried to use his debit card or any of his other cards because we would have been notified of that. So most likely, he just didn't give up any information. And we all know what happens when you don't give up information. Often, they will get upset and just kill you. And remember that these are my thoughts and my theories. This isn't 100% foolproof because we don't have much to go off on, but judging by the evidence that we do have, this seems like the most feasible theory for me. Now, what's going to make this investigation very difficult for the coroner is the fact that how he was found is just unbearable. He didn't have a bottom jaw, he didn't have eyes, they found no brain, his body had zero organs. If he was beaten to death, they would never know unless it was due to blunt force trauma, which is very hard to find unless you have a very significant scalp injury. It could have happened due to strangulation. However, this would be hard to find out because normally they find out about strangulation through a crushed larynx. However, in this situation, they said the fish, the turtles were feeding on the body. I mean, it's gruesome details. The only way that the coroner will even be able to find a cause of death is if it was due to a gunshot wound, blunt force trauma, anything else will be very hard to figure out because when looking for signs of you drowning, they're looking inside of your lungs for water in your airways. He was in the water so long, I don't know how they're gonna come to the conclusion that he drowned to death. Most likely the autopsy results will be released and the death will be undetermined. Realize that in this situation, a suicide is their best way out. That's their best way out because they don't know anything. Listen, they didn't even have the resources to identify the body through DNA means that they have to search for outside help. Without the resources to even form a proper DNA analysis, that puts their whole operation under scrutiny. And we're not even going to sit here and pretend like there aren't suspicious circumstances popping up all around the Illinois surrounding areas. The day after Jelani's body was identified and publicly named that it was him, a day afterwards, a young woman went missing from Chicago by the name of Tyra Coleman. She was 23 years old. That could easily be someone tying up loose ends. I find it very suspicious that someone goes missing right after the day that they announced that that was actually his body. Could it be possibly connected? Possibly. Could it have nothing to do with it? It's a possibility, but that's definitely something that needs to be run down. Upon more research, I found out that just months prior to Jelani's disappearance in the same town of Peru, a young woman was kidnapped by a man named Bobby. Now, this was a domestic dispute. He came and got her from Peru. He held her against the wheel. She was returned safely. However, Bobby is still at large and nowhere to be found. 
Who's to say he's not still in Peru running around committing crimes? There's something that needs to be run down. You see, when things like this happen, that's the type of things that the authorities try to keep under wrap. Because when ordinary people start making connections that they haven't made, it's a problem for them because then it causes them to get up off their ass and really work. Now, at this point in time, I'm still researching uh, other missing people maybe crimes that may have been committed around the area. If you have any credible links, make sure you send them to me. I will be viewing any and all links that are sent to me. But as of right now, I can only say things in theoretical form because nothing has been released yet. No real paperwork, no real autopsy paperwork. All of this will be pending on what is released and what's not released. But if I had to take a guess, they're gonna seal it, lock it, and throw it away because this stinks to high hell. So whenever they do start releasing things, if they do, I will be fully on top of this. Another person out there that I think that y'all should subscribe to that I know would do a phenomenal job on this case is 54 Keys. If you aren't familiar with her page, I strongly advise you go over there and subscribe. She does great work. And again, any and all links, please send them to me. Now, if you comment, don't post the link in the comments because YouTube will automatically filter that out. Post a comment first, and then whatever links you have to send, post that in the thread. This is where I'm gonna have to end the video because beyond my theory, I don't like to speculate <laughs> any further because I don't wanna get beside myself. I don't jump the gun. I, I can only form an opinion, and hopefully once the paperwork comes out, that corroborates how I feel. Regardless, this was senseless. And I don't believe that a man like Jelani Day, who was that family oriented, just jumped into the water and ended his own life without even telling anyone. It just doesn't make sense. He was too driven to be who he was gonna be. So you'll never get me to believe that he just checked out without a word. Rest in peace, Jelani Day. I truly hope that justice will come soon because nothing about this story makes sense.